Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy and in this video we're going to show you exactly what you need to do to set up your X4R and Tyrannus radio. So this is the final video in the three part series for the build along, setting up your quad and then finally setting up your receiver. So for this video what you're going to be needing to do is you are going to need your X4R receiver, you're going to need two cable ties or zip ties to tie down the X4R onto your frame and then you're also going to need some electrical tape and a pair of scissors to cut down the pieces of cable tie that's left over. And then also finally, you are also going to need a glue gun. So any glue gun that's just heats it up and then that's all that you need. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is actually mod our X4R a little bit to make it stronger and more durable in crashes and things like that. So you can just cut off this little piece of heat shrink that is on the back of it because that then allows you to just very easily take this off. Okay, just slip that right off and then it opens up and then we are left with the X4R. So it makes it a lot smaller and it allows you access to your little antennas. So what you want to do then is take the glue gun and then just apply a blob of glue onto the base of where the antenna is. And then what that does is that just makes sure that it strengthens it quite a bit because in some crashes what I've seen happen to me before is I'll crash it and then my antenna will get ripped off and then actually rip off the entire pad on the X4R. So this just helps a little bit with making sure that in gnarly crashes, you will hopefully not break your X4R and that it will last a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna put mine on my little piece of electrical tape like that, and then I'm gonna wait for it to dry. And then once it's dry, we're gonna carry on with the video. All right, so now that the hot glue is dry, it's also just probably important to mention that you don't really have to do this if you don't have a glue gun. It's not the end of the world. You can carry on with the video past this. Um, like I said, this is only to reinforce your X4R a little bit. So then what we're gonna do, the next thing is we're gonna take this electrical tape and then just cover up most of the electronics on the board so that um, it is not exposed so sometimes what might happen is when we tie this down onto our flight controller, you don't want it to be making contact to any um, open wires that's on your flight controller or anything like that because you might um, short something out. So you can just very easily wrap it around um, until all those electronics are covered up and then finish it off really nicely. But with that done, it's important to remember that on the side here, by this little white port, that is a telemetry port. We are not gonna be using that, um, so that's not necessary to have that open, but we do wanna have open this little button that's on the side. So you're just gonna to wanna to cut away a little bit at this until you can see the button and the LEDs that are on the side. So there we go, you'll see that my button is exposed and the LEDs. And then that is what you wanna be able to see um, on your X4R because that's what we're gonna be using to reference whether we are binded or not. And that's also the button we're gonna be using to bind our X4R. So if that is exposed, then you are good to go. So then the final thing on the mod that we're doing for the X4R is there's a little uh, thingy that came with your X4R, which you're just gonna be putting on the pins. If that white thing is facing up, you're gonna be putting it on the pins all the way at the bottom. So that is our X4R and now we are ready to put it onto the quadcopter. So we are going to have it orientated. Let me zoom in for us a little bit here so you guys can see it a little bit easier. So we are gonna have it orientated, like I said, with the white telemetry port facing up. And then if that telemetry port is facing up, we are going to plug in this cable, which we soldered on earlier, onto the bottom pin. So there's pins at the bottom and pins at the top. And on your little connector over here, you'll have the yellow cable facing to the top as well. So that is how it gets plugged in. Let me just unroll these a little bit so that you can see it is the yellow one all the way at the top and then red and then black. So that gets plugged in there and that is our X4R that is connected. So once it has been connected, the way that we wanna put it on the quadcopter, which I've seen is the easiest, is we're gonna put it down just like that with these antennas facing out the back. And I'll show you now why we are gonna do that in a second. So we are then gonna put this cable tie under the uh, flight controller, use the second one to extend a little bit. If you have a cable tie that is long enough, you don't need 
to grab two cable ties, but I don't have a long enough one. So I'm just going to mod mine a little bit like this. There we go. That's done. Put that one over. And then that zip ties my X4R securely onto my flight controller. So with that done, I can then cut off the excess pieces of zip tie, which I will not be using, and my X4R has been installed. Finally, what you wanna do is, this is what I like to do with my X4R. Some guys will not agree with me at all, and that is totally fine if you don't agree with me, but I haven't run into any problems before, and that is regarding range. So they say that the best way to mount these are 90 degrees um, apart from each other in an upwards position, but what I have actually seen is that if I mount mine on the bottom of the arms, they are very, very safe there. I haven't broken a single X4R antenna. Let me zoom out so you guys can see a little bit better. I haven't broken a single one like that, and I haven't ever had any problems with range. So if you have your glue gun, you can just start gluing this down onto the bottom of the frame. So I'm just putting a dab of glue over there so it keeps it in place and then another dab of glue over there just so it can be in place and then we'll do the other side as well. So like I said you can find an alternative way to mount your X4R antennas but I have personally done this for a very long time and I have never had any problems with range when using an X4R. So that is how we wanna do it. Just wait for that to dry a little bit and then we can go back again and do it really nicely. So once you've done that, you can go back, glue this down really nicely. Um, and then once that's glued down really nicely, uh, because of time, I'm not gonna do this so nicely right now, but you guys can take your time, make sure that's really, really nice. Take off all this excess glue that we don't need and we don't want. And once that's done, we can then take the tape again and then just wrap the tape around it again a few times. And then that is completely out of the way. The problem is why we do it like this is if it's on top um, and you crash your quad, sometimes those will bend over and go into your props and it'll actually cut off the antenna for your X4R and you don't want that. So this way it is good. You're good to go and it's very, very easy out of the way. And I just prefer having it like that. So once all of that is done, we can then move over. Yeah, I just spilled a little bit of hot glue on my table. Let's just remove that. Okay, I'll take that off a little bit later. Just disregard that. So once we are done with that, let's just make sure that everything is working. So let me grab a battery. And then once you have a battery, let's plug it in just to make sure that everything is working perfectly fine on your X4R. So perfect, you will see that it is flashing red on the X4R and that means that everything is working fine, the power is coming through to it and we are almost ready to bind it. So before we put it into bind mode, we need to change a few things on our Tyrannus radio. So let's get right into setting up our Tyrannus radio. So let me just focus on this radio. There we go. And then switch on my radio. Okay, so you are gonna wanna create a new model. Go into menu, go over down to an open model. And once you are on an open model, you're gonna hold in the enter button, click create model, and then you're gonna scroll over all the way to the right where it shows the quadcopter, press enter. On all of these, you can just press page to go next skip past all of those long enter to confirm and then model seven is what we are going to be using right now so once you are in your model the next thing you're going to want to do is go um, use the up arrow to go up all the way to um, where it says the internal rf mode must be on d16 and the channel range it can just be from one to eight and then the next thing you want to do is hit the bind button so the only important thing you want to make sure here is that it is on d16 which is for s -bus. so we are going to hit the enter button and it's going to start beeping so you guys will hear the beep if that's beeping like that then you know everything is going well so with it beeping like that we can then grab our x4r that we have over here on the quad hold down the little button that is exposed now and while holding down the button you're going to plug it in so with it plugged in like that you'll see that it goes green and a red light flashing and what that does is it means that it has binded to 
the Tyrannus radio. So once that's done, we can just plug this out again and exit this so it stops beeping and then plug it back in and it should be green. And if you see that light green, let me show a little bit closer. If you see that light green, then you know that you binded it successfully. So with that done, before we move on over to the computer to set up the final modes, we are going to go over to a next page. We are going over to where it says inputs. So that is page number five. So then all the way at the bottom, we're gonna add another input and then we wanna scroll down to source. So at source, you're just gonna hit enter and then you're gonna hit the switch on the back of your Tyrannus. That is what I like to use to arm my quad because um, it can only go up or down. There's no in between like this switch goes three ways. Um, this is just a two way switch. I prefer having it on there. Down is unarmed, up is armed. So if you're in trouble, you can just flick it down really quickly. So this is the switch that you're gonna be using, not any one of the other ones. So if you switch that up and down, you'll see that it changes to SF automatically. And that is our final switch. That was what we are gonna set in clean flight to be able to arm our quad. And that's it. So that's everything that we need to physically do on our quad and our radio. And then once we're done with that, we can head over to the Betaflight configurator. All right, so once you are back into Betaflight again, we are then going to connect it up. And then there's a few things that we're gonna change before we get into connecting the radio completely. So on the ports tab, you wanna go down to where it says UART number four, and then select where it says RX, click serial RX so that it goes yellow, and then you can hit save and reboot. So once it's rebooted, you can connect that up again and then we can go over to configuration. And in the configuration tab, where it says here receiver mode, we will be using RX serial because that is for SBUS and the X4R uses SBUS. And the same thing at the bottom here, serial to receiver provider will also be on, X, on SBUS. So once those two have been clicked, you can hit save and reboot again. And then it's gonna kick you out, connect it back up again, and then everything should be almost ready to go. Finally, on the channel mapping, you wanna change it from AETR so that it says JR Spectrum and Graupner, and that is TAER. If you don't have it the TAER way, then your throttle, your pitch and roll, everything is messed up, and TAER is the way to go. So you can hit save and then everything is set up and ready to go. So if I open my throttle, you will now see how my throttle is going up and down. My yaw is going perfectly fine there on the side and you'll even see the quad moving around a little bit as I am giving inputs. So that also just shows you how quickly the quad will be moving if you have it on the certain rates, which we set a little while ago. So that is the receiver uh, page. And then the last little tab, if you go into modes, you see where it says arm, you wanna click on add range. Auxiliary one is that switch that we set up earlier. And then down, it's at 1000 and up, it's at 2000. So we wanted to arm when it's at 2000. So this yellow section is everywhere where it will arm. So you just slide that over and then you can hit save. So with all of that done, let me just grab my battery again and then you can plug in your quad. I'm plugging mine in right now. You can hear those beeping and then I'm going to try and arm my quad. There we go, quad is armed and throttling up. You guys should even be able to hear that and just checking that everything else is working fine. Also, as I've said before, when you do this, make sure your propellers are unplugged. You don't want your props to be in and then your quad taking off while it's on your computer desk. You will hurt yourself. And then that's it. That is everything completed. You have everything set up. Everything is finally ready to go. Uh, if you haven't already, you can just close up your quadcopter again after putting all your receiver on and then connecting up your VTX, connecting up your uh, camera and then you are ready to go and fly so once you are done with this video definitely check out the next one in the series it will be shown at the end of this video and you can click on that and that will start you on your FPV journey I really hope you guys enjoyed building this quad and that you learned a lot if you have any suggestions for future videos like this please let me know in the comment section below and I really hope to see you guys active on my channel thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one